dreams can tell us a lot about ourselves if we examine them deeply enough. Our desires, our fears, our motivations, all held in the stasis of a moment that is only reflected once one settles into the deep rhythm of REM sleep. What happens if these dreams are influenced with negative energy? Would we be stuck in a never-ending nightmare, desperate to claw our way back to the surface of reality? Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle does not answer this question, but it does explore the concept of dreams, and is the game I'll be reviewing today. Released for the Sony PlayStation in Japan in 1997, and the rest of the world in 1998, this action platformer promises a cute, heartfelt adventure through a foreign land interwoven with the power of dreams. I first encountered this title on a demo disc that came packaged with the official Australian PlayStation magazine. Do you remember those days? You could buy a magazine and it would come with a disc slipped into a square paper envelope sealed with a sticker displaying the games contained on the enclosed CD, some playable and others just a video. Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle was a title I played the demo of, repeatedly, because I just enjoyed it so much. But I digress. We play as the titular Klonoa, an anthropomorphic cat boy accompanied by his friend, a ring spirit named Hugh Pal. According to the accompanying instruction manual, the two have been friends since they were young, and often would whittle away the days playing together in the fields surrounding the village of Breescale. One night, Klonoa has a bad dream where a force strikes a nearby Bell Hill, sending ominous dark clouds spreading across the land. Not long after this, in his waking reality, a flying vehicle crashes into the landmark, heralding the start of his adventure. When Klonoa and Hugh Powell arrive at the summit of Bell Hill, they discover a dark figure who refers to himself as Guardius. We learn that Guardius has captured the diva Lafice and is searching for a pendant. His intent is to cover the land in darkness and prevent it from being saved through the Song of Rebirth. He takes Lafice into his galaxy void and shoots off into the sky like a newspaper rolled and thrown by Paperboy. We are then left to deal with Guardius' henchman, Joker, who gives us a taste of how boss battles work within the game, but I'll talk more on that later. Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle is played in chapters called Visions, with each vision being split into two acts. In total, the game has 12 acts that takes Klonoa across the various realms of Phantom Isle. It's within the various realms that the dreamlike qualities of the world really comes to life. Klonoa's hometown of Breezegale is a sleepy town with windmills, and a stone mason who is erecting a tower to reach a palace in the sky, said to be the home of the songstress Lafice. The kingdom of Jugpot sports a backward running waterfall and giant jugs that can knock a careless player off precarious ledges, not to mention the magical flying fish. Forlock blends nature with technology in a large mansion fitted with machinery that will test Klonoa's reflexes. Then there's the Moon Kingdom. No, not that one with its many pitfalls that will eat away at your number of lives, inducing anxiety. Along the way, Klonoa will meet various inhabitants of the realm of Phantom Isle that will either help or hinder his adventure. These interactions are usually accompanied by a vocal interpretation of what the characters are saying in a language unique to Phantom Isle. I enjoyed this a lot as it added a charm beyond what you'd receive from just looking at the animation and reading the text. I especially thought Hugh Powell's representation was ridiculously cute. It's almost as though one of the Muppets had decided to do some voice work for the game. <laughs> the game plays as a 2.5D side-scrolling platformer where Klonoa has two moves that he can conduct of his own accord. First is the ability to jump. Once in the air, you can hold the jump button down to make Klonoa flap his long ears to stay afloat for a short while. This technique is invaluable to preserving his life. The other ability has him shooting bullets from his wind ring. A wind bullet that connects with a small enemy will inflate them, causing Klonoa to pick them up. With the inflated enemy, Klonoa can destroy other enemies, interact with the environment by throwing the inflated enemy into obstacles or switches, or he can also use it as a platform to perform a double jump to reach higher places. I must also mention that the 2.5D aspect comes into play a lot, whereby Klonoa can interact with objects in the foreground or background of each of the levels by throwing things into them. I thought this was a nice departure from the typical style of a side-scrolling platformer that was typical of games of the same era. Along the various paths, Klonoa can find dream stones in both green and blue variety. Green stones represent one stone, whereas blue represents five. However, if you happen to come across a mirror spirit trapped in a bubble and release it, these figures are doubled per gem you collect for a limited time. Collecting a total of 100 of these dream stones will give Klonoa another life. Lives are precious in this game, 
as there are many pitfalls such as bottomless pits, live electricity, and lava that will instantly kill you if you touch them. Additionally, Klonoa has 3 hearts per life, where each contact with an enemy depletes half of one. In total, you can be struck 6 times before you lose a life, however you can collect small and large hearts throughout the various visions to replenish Klonoa's health. Both gems and hearts are liberally littered throughout the axe, so unless you really suck at platformers, you'll never need to be worried that you'll have to face the game over screen. Sometimes you may also find items trapped in bubbles. For example, a memory clock which serves as a checkpoint. If you die after releasing a memory clock, Klonoa will be returned to that point when he dies. There are also six phantom millions hidden in each act, who have been trapped in nightmares. Releasing them from their prisons will add them to the world map screen where they will play in an orchestra to celebrate your success at the end of each act. Find all of them across all the acts, and you unlock the ability to access a jukebox from which you can play any song you have heard in the game. I didn't do this as some of them were located in precarious places with a high risk of Klonoa falling to his death if you failed to pop the bubble and get back onto safe footing before he expired. Speaking of safe footing, the game presents many hazards that become progressively more difficult as the game continues. When I began the game I thought it was a little too easy, however soon realised the error of that judgement when the game started requesting me to make jumps onto tiny platforms over death pits and to outmanoeuvre unbeatable enemies. One of the most annoying things to me, which didn't help with the platforming, was that Klonoa slides a little before coming to a complete stop when running. I only noticed this because I found myself falling off the edge of a platform a few too many times, despite my best efforts not to. At least the game is generous in giving you dream gems and 1-up coins, so that you never have to fear reaching the game over screen, though I did get a little paranoid about that happening in the final couple of visions. As I mentioned before, you will have to deal with boss battles along the adventure. These occur at the end of each vision. When you enter one, in the top left corner of the screen a measure of the boss's health will appear. In each encounter you need to find their weak spot and exploit it to reduce their health. This typically concerns inflating a small enemy and throwing it at a particular part of the boss's body. Generally these encounters aren't too difficult, though the last few will give you a run for your money. My favourite boss battle was the one with Joker. You are suspended above the kingdom on a circular platform that circles the boss. Along it, there are some enemies you can inflate and throw into Joker. However, once you have done this a couple of times, he will then morph into some weird Lapras Loch Ness monster type of beast and turn most of the tiles on the platform dark. You then need to walk over them all and turn them gold again before Joker will revert back to his original form and you can damage him. From its cute clay modelled characters to the lovingly crafted 3D environments, it's not hard to love the aesthetic of this game. In fact, the character modelling put to mind the style used in Super Mario RPG or the Donkey Kong Country series on the Super Nintendo. I felt that the sprites fit with the 3D rendered backgrounds quite well. The sparse CGI cutscenes also were a pleasant surprise, especially the one that plays before the reveal of the final vision. The character and enemy designs were all unique and cute, and I enjoyed encountering them all along the adventure. The various locations also had a lot of detail lovingly crafted into them, echoing the visions of a dream. The music has a dreamlike enchanted ambience to it with a strong use of wind instruments indicative of Klonoa's home village as well as harps and strong percussion. Each kingdom has a unique sound to it that will stick with you after you beat the game. My favourite track would be Jugpot Falls that has a whimsical nature echoing the mysticism and wonder of the backward running waterfall that Klonoa and Hugh Powell struggled to climb. Again, I must also mention the cuteness of the character voices that really breathe life into the interactions that the characters have with each other in the cutscenes. They just made the experience all that more enjoyable and really gave weight to one of the scenes at the end of the game that never fails to make me tear up. Whilst Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle is a platformer that doesn't really bring anything new to the table in regard to gameplay other than the 2.5D, it certainly exudes a lot of charm through the characterization that shines through in the cutscenes. The game only takes around 4 hours to beat if playing normally, so is well worth the time investment. If you haven't played this game, then I'd recommend you check it out and liberate yourselves from your nightmares. By the way, I don't generally tend to play all that many platformers. Are there any that you have played and enjoyed and would want to recommend to me? Let me know in the comments. This has been Venoir with a review of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle for the Sony PlayStation. If you enjoyed this review, please feel free to like or subscribe as it helps me out a bunch. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again next time. Bye bye for now.